My name is Seth Fry. I'm a professor at UC Davis in the Department of Communication. My training is in a mix of cognitive science and computational social science, and we're going to be talking about when to take risks. Before we dive into that, um, we got to motivate a little bit. Let's ask, what can computational social science teach? It can teach you a bunch of facts about human society. It can also teach you um, how to think good, and you're, you're going to get a lot of both of those. I'm going to focus more on the second. Why? There's this dirty secret. Um, this is terrifying, actually. Uh, pretty much half of what we know in social science is wrong, and we don't know which half. Uh, this, we know this, we're discovering this, um, especially recently because of the computational revolution in social science has, has brought replication. Taking something that someone else found and bringing it and, and just doing it a second time, that used to be a year project, a two-year project. Now it's the click of a button. So because computers have accelerated uh, the rate of double checking, we're now able to look back and find that this foundation that we thought we were on that was so stable is now shaky. Uh, so facts, they come and go, but learning how to think strong and learning how models can help you think better, uh, that's something really worth working towards. And that's something that I can uh, hopefully today, with our time together, um, show you, demonstrate. You already know that all models are wrong, um, and that, but they can be useful anyway. Still, you know, it's one thing to hear that. It's another thing to, to see it, to experience it. So here's my proposal. I'm going to write, write you live a couple of lines of code. We're going to take some, some decisions of real, actual importance to you uh, in your daily life and, and simplify them down to simple models. and. Uh, and write a couple lines of code and give you insight. This is, my, this is my promise, this is my goal, to give you insight into actual important decisions in your everyday life. Uh, I think we can do it with just a couple lines of code. And, and, and this is gonna do, I'm gonna try to bring it home, this claim that as, as fake as they are, as simple as they are, that they can still actually be useful, not just for science, but for you. Uh, important decisions in your life. It's a tall order, we're gonna see if we can pull it off. We'll see if I can convince you. So, you face uh, risky decisions every day. Um, everything from, uh, you know, should I go with my stable favorite thing at my, at my favorite restaurant or should I get this thing I've never had before? You know, that's a small risky decision. All the way up to, you know, picking the career that, that you'll uh, work at the rest of your life or picking the relationship that will take you through the rest of your life. These are all big, terrifying decisions, um, not just for, for you, for everybody. Um, and, and some of them are sort of, we'll call them less risky, they feel less risky, like picking a new entree, and some of them feel more risky. And the sort of intuition, what we go through life sort of experiencing is that the smaller risks, it's easier to go risky. There's no, we, we should, we should gamble on the, on the smaller decisions, but on the bigger ones, on the ones we'll live with for the rest of our lives, we should be more risk averse, we should be more neutral. Uh, so that's our intuition, we're going to challenge that with a simple model. I'm going to try to actually get you to come out thinking exactly the opposite. This is my challenge today. So, um, with, with each of these risks, we can think there's the long shot and the safe bet. So, uh, so your safe bet's your favorite entree. The long shot is this new thing you haven't tried before. Um, your, your safe bet is your favorite restaurant that's always consistent. The, the long shot is that restaurant you've never been to before that'll probably be worse, but every now and then is a lot better. Uh, your safe bet in, in looking for relationships or looking for friends might be house parties with your other friends. You can have a good sense everyone will be okay. The long shot is talking to a random person at Safeway. <laughs> Most of those conversations are going to go really badly, but just, it's a big world out there. Every now and then, it's just going to go better. A safer bet uh, in, in, in careers is going to be um, uh, reaching out through friends or, or maybe, a, maybe a headhunter. You know, some professional can get you a fine job for you, where uh, the long shot would be Craigslist. Most jobs are on Craigslist awful, but believe me, I've, uh, some of my friends have had amazing, totally like unrealistically fantastic jobs on Craigslist. So you've got safe bets and long shots in all of these important types of decisions in your life. Here's our first modeling step. I'm going to model the safe bet versus the long shot as, um, as, a, as, a, as a draw from, uh, from two, two, uh, two jars, two piles of numbers. I want to pick high numbers from the jar, but I'm picking randomly. I don't get to pick. I'm just, I pick out a number, 
And uh, the safe bet, I'm always going to pick the number 7, 8, or 9. The long shot, I could pick any number 1 through 10. So most of the numbers I'm going to pick are going to be lower, but every now and then I'll pick a better number. And this is our model. This is our model of safe bets versus risky decisions. We've already thrown away all the details. Suddenly in this model, I can't tell the difference between your career and your relationships and your favorite entree. We've abstracted all that detail away uh, and simplified it down to a simple thing. Okay. Uh, with, with this level of simplicity, we can now dive into some code. Okay, so let's program this up. Our simple model of, of risky decision making. Uh, it's, we're going to call that a complicated problem, and every complicated problem you break up into simpler and simpler and simpler parts. So the very, very first thing we're going to want to need is a random number generator. Uh, I'm allowed to type commands down here, so for example, 1 plus 1, what does it become? 2. I just hit enter and I got the answer 2. I'm going to pull this up and we'll see our whole history. If I type the word random, random is a function, when I hit random space, number two, I'll get two random numbers, specifically zero and one. I'm going to hit up arrow, enter, up arrow, enter, and I rerun this command every time I do up arrow, enter. I'm generating random numbers, zero, one, zero, one. We're going to want uh, the random numbers one through ten. So let me write random space ten. Run that a bunch of times, I'm getting more random numbers. Uh, you're going to find, it gives me the random numbers 0 through 9. I'm never actually going to get the number 10. So you get the random numbers 1 through 10, instead of the random numbers 0 through 9 as they're coming up. All I have to do is take whatever number comes out of random and add plus 1. So now we're going to get, so this little line, random, one plus, random 10 plus 1, is going to give us the random numbers 1 through 10. All right, that was one of our random, that's our, uh, that's our risky choice. Now let's code up our safe choice. Our safe choice is going to be the numbers 7, 8, or 9. Three numbers. So I'm going to type random 3. And of course, I'm only going to get the numbers 0, 1, and 2. So, how, so given the numbers 0, 1, and 2, um, how do I get the numbers 7, 8, and 9? Well, let's add 6. And if I run that, up, enter, up, enter, up, enter. That was wild. We get the numbers 7, uh, 6, 7, and 8. Uh, that was my mistake. Now we add 7, we get the numbers 7, 8, and 9. Okay. What do we do next? Now we're going to move into code world. And I'm, I just want this exact same code to do the exact same thing, but now uh, not in this command center, but in real code. So maybe you already know that we have our basic boilerplate. I'm going to write to go end. And this is a simple function. Right now it does nothing. A simple function. It's a simple bit of code that's supposed to do something. And every time I press the go button, go, okay, it's going to do it. So if I hit go, I just ran the go uh, code. Everything that's in go, nothing's in go. I can make something be in go. Let's just show the number three. Okay, enter, I hit go. What happens down here, down here, number three appears. Go, 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 go. Fantastic. We're getting closer. We're slowly, slowly, slowly building something out of nothing. I'm going to want to, we're going to create two numbers. I'm going to create these two numbers that could mean anything. Um, Uh, this is just boilerplate code up top, and what that means is that when you learn a language, you just learn the stuff you sort of type all the time. One thing you just type all the time is the word globals. One thing you type all the time is to go and end. So, and in here I get to type anything I want. I'm going to type risky bet, and I'm going to type safe bet. And these are just going to be holders. These are containers that I can put anything into. 
um, the way I put stuff into them uh, is with a command called set. So if I set risky bet to say hi, and then I just show risky bet. Now, when I hit the go button, I'm going to run everything inside these two lines of code. So I'm going to go back to my interface, I'm going to hit go, and it's going to say hi. And if I set risky bet to be something else, more old fashioned high, then I'll get bet. So we're slowly building up from, uh, you just learned about functions, you just learned about variables, uh, but more importantly, you're learning about how to build, uh, how you're watching how someone builds up from nothing to something. And we don't have to, you don't have to understand everything. You just have to follow the basic arc, the basic story that we're building up. So now I'm going to take a big leap. Remember that code we wrote before? Random three numbers plus seven. That's our, no, no. Random numbers. That was our safe, that's our safe bet. We're doing our risky bet now. So 10 plus one. And I'm going to add my safe bet. Set the safe bet to random three numbers plus seven. Uh, and if I show risky bet, now I hit go, I'm getting four, I'm getting seven. We're not even using, so these are numbers. If you keep running this long enough, you'll see we're getting all the numbers, one through ten. Because uh, even though I set safe bet to mean something, I'm only showing the one thing I defined over here. I'm showing risky bet. Now we're going to add an interface element. It's pretty ugly to be looking down here all the time. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to pick something called a monitor. And a monitor gives me a view into anything I want. I want this to always have whatever value is in risky bet. And I'm going to make another that always has whatever value is in safe bet. All right, so now every time I hit go, uh, and I'll go back to my code. I don't need this line anymore. This show, we're not doing that anymore. We're just setting risky bet to a number. We're setting safe bet to a number. And if I hit go, um, I'm always, every time I hit go, I'm redefining those variables. I'm setting them to new numbers. And le let's look for some patterns here. Which one tends to be bigger? To me, it looks like safe bet tends to be a bigger number. So now we've made it to a certain part. Um, okay, so now every time I hit go, I simulate that uh, I went on a date or I, w or I got a job or I, or I um, took a, a class. Um, but I'm getting tired hitting go all the time, generating these random numbers one by one. Uh, so now we're going to go into... Uh, we know, because we know, because I know how NetLogo works, I know it has something called n values. That's another function. What does it take a number? Let's say 10. Uh, and then it takes any code I want to put inside of these little blocks right here, uh, which I'm going to put random 10 plus 1. Now when I run that, instead of having to hit go 10 times, I get this list of 10 things. So, because what I want to know, I don't just want to know uh, each individual outcome. I want to know um, the, the average, my average experience over many dates, over many job interviews. So here's what we're going to do. After getting that list, I'm allowed to take the mean of all the numbers in that list. Okay? So I'm hitting up, enter, I'm hitting enter, and I'm rerunning that every single time. Now that's different every time, but if I made the list really long, like a thousand numbers long, I'm not going to show you that. We're just going to take the mean. I'm going to show that they become, the numbers become really similar to each other. The average of all the numbers, 1 through 10, is about 5.5. So let's, let's type that up in our code right here. I'm going to take risky bet. I'm going to put it in these blocks. I'm going to take n values, just like we saw. Take the number, uh, let's say 100, okay? And I'm going to take the mean of that. 
We're going to find out, what are we going to find out? We're going to find out that the mean risky bet is always worse than the mean safe bet. If you were to go on a, a thousand interviews, then you should really get jobs from your friends. The number of risky bet is always lower than the number of safe bet, very consistently. Okay? All right, so that was all when we're playing for the mean. So, uh, let's surface from the code. Um, we had two piles of numbers. We had uh, a jar full of the numbers 7, 8, and 9 that I'm picking randomly, and we had a jar full of numbers 1 through 10 that I was picking randomly. And what did we discover? Well, it's no surprise. Uh, with enough draws, if I'm always t taking the average of the numbers that I'm getting, um, and this is my average experience uh, going out. This is my average experience at, at my favorite restaurant. Uh, this is my average experience um, uh, uh, getting, uh, doing job interviews or trying jobs out. Uh, the average of the safe bet is always going to be higher than the average of the risky bet. Uh, so you should, uh, you should be um, risk averse, you should avoid risky bets. When you're playing for the mean, when you're playing for the average over many experiences, you should play it safe and not take any risks. Now, that's not very exciting, that's not very interesting, uh, and it's not very surprising, certainly. I mean, you, you might have seen it coming before. We did, why did we have to write four lines of code even to, to learn this new thing about ourselves? Did I really gain new insight? Well, um... Now we're going to make a distinction. We had a distinction between the safe bet and the risky bet. Now let's make a distinction between playing for the mean and playing for the max. Okay? Uh, playing for the, the mean, uh, may I'm not, maybe I'm not looking for a career. I'm looking for a bunch of gigs. Uh, and I just want to have the best average gig. Maybe I'm not looking for a long-term relationship. Uh, I'm just looking for a bunch of dates. And I'm not trying to... I'm, I just want to have my average quality of dates be high and so on. So those are all uh, playing for the mean. You're just trying to, av trying to get the best average experience. But not everything in life is playing for the average. Uh, if you think about it, sure your, your GPA is the average uh, of how you did over many classes, but your GPA is different from your education. Your education is really about your best experiences all co over many classes combined. Uh, your long-term relationships, they're not drawn, uh, they're not the average of all the, of all the dates you went on. They're really you taking the very best out of those dates, taking the best person over a number of dates. Uh, your favorite restaurant is the max over all the restaurants you've tried. Your career is the best over all the careers you've tried. For the most important decisions in our lives, more often than not, we're playing not for the mean, we're playing for the maximum over a big list of numbers, over a large number of draws from these piles of numbers. And playing for, playing for the mean is fundamentally different from playing in the max in your life, and it requires a fundamentally different approach to risk. So now, let's dive back into the code. But we have this other idea. I just introduced this idea of playing for the max. That's when you're not looking to date, when you're looking for a long-term relationship, when you're not looking for gigs, when you're looking for a career. In those situations, we have this number, we put 100. I'm going to change mean to max. It's another function in that logo. You'll see it change color from black letters to, to purple letters. That means that logo knows what that word means. We're going to take the maximum of 100 draws from 1 to 10, the maximum of 100 draws from uh, seven to from uh, what was it? From seven to nine. What are we going to find? It's always better when you're playing for the max and you have a hundred attempts uh, to take the risky bet. Okay, well that's a hundred attempts. What about just for um, two attempts, or just for one attempt? For just one attempt. I don't know. When I'm just taking one attempt, it seems still better, even if I'm playing for the maximum, this is the maximum of one number, it's still better to take the safe bet. So you can play around with this, you can keep plugging different numbers in. Okay, surfacing, we just saw that the numbers are totally different when I'm playing for the max, that suddenly I should take the risky bet. Of course, that was when I set the slider to uh, 100. When I set the slider to 1, I should maybe still play it safe. Well, what do you think? What's that number in the middle? What's the sweet spot? If, if I, I don't have all the time in the world um, to, to go on job interviews or to try every restaurant in Davis or to uh, 
uh, or to um, you know uh, go out with everybody. Uh, I, can't, I can't spend all the time in the world, but uh, you know I've got a little bit of time to look around. What do you think is that number? Is it? Uh, is it? I don't think it's fifty because it's only ten numbers. Um, I don't think it's. Uh, I think it must be bigger than like three. And when you play around long enough, you'll find that the magic number is only six. If you have more than six dates, more than six interviews, if you're willing to put in that big of a search for the best opportunity, what you're going to find is that that's when it tends to be better to take the risky bet. Number six specifically isn't that magic. It can change with the setup, but the takeaway is the same. When you're playing for the max and you have the time to look around, the risky bet is safer than it seems. And how does this help you? Well, you know, maybe you're... Uh Maybe your perfect experience, uh, maybe your safe bet isn't a 7, 8, or a 9. Maybe it's a, a 5, a 6, or a 7. All you have to do is change this one number from 7 to 6. And now you're playing a totally different game. You're, you're modeling your own situation. And so I could do the pencil and paper math, or you can just play around with numbers and experience and get a sense of what comes out better for you. And you'll find um, exactly how many times you have to try for the risky bet to be the best bet for you. So, uh, breaking it out right here, uh, when should you take the safe bet, when should you take the long shot? Uh, that's equivalent to saying, uh, let, we've got your gig hunting through friends, gig hunting through Craigslist. That's kind of scary, but if you have enough experiences on Craigslist and you're playing for the max, then uh, you're bound to find the better job, the better, uh, the better experience from the sort of risky distribution, even though most experiences are worse, uh, it's the risky environment that has that small, tiny chance that's just something better than you could have gotten anywhere else. Now, so uh, we face risky decisions. When should I go one direction? When should I go the other? Well, when your takeaway benefit from a life experience uh, is the mean of many tries, uh, then you should be risk neutral. You should, uh, you should take the safer bet. You shouldn't go out of your way and expose yourself to risk. But when your benefit is the maximum of many tries and you have more than a few tries, you should bet, uh, bet on the place that offers the highest maximum regardless of what its average is, regardless of how uh, awful its worst experiences are. Now, this has a corollary. We've been talking about playing for the mean, playing for the max. There's also life decisions where you're playing for the min. So um, squirrel suits are, are a fine example. Incredibly risky sports, incredibly risky endeavors. Things where you're going to have a great time most of the time. You'll have an amazing time most of the time. But there's a small probability uh, that, what, that wha what you'll walk away from um, is worse than anything, is the worst of the, all of your experiences. In the case where you're playing for the min, where you're exposing yourself to tremendous amounts of risk uh, for something that's usually very rewarding, but sometimes awful, you, the, this is a time to be risk averse, uh, to avoid risk, uh, and to take the safer bet. Okay, so, the, so we just pulled this off. Somehow we did the strangest thing. We wrote a couple lines of code, we threw away all this detail that's really important to the most important decisions of your life, and we came away with the opposite of what you'd expect, where you might have approached the most important decisions of your life with a little bit of caution uh, and only let yourself kind of fly on risky behavior with easier, lower stakes decisions. Uh, now uh, we're walking away with a little bit the opposite conclusion, that uh, in cases where, you're, where the experiences you're going to walk away from after many draws, after many attempts, uh, are, uh, are, the, are the best of all those draws, you should roll the dice. You should be uh, risk-seeking. So, um, so uh, the, I mean, this, and this is the core of modeling. We threw away a lot of that's important about scary decisions. Um, and, we, and in the process, we distilled the essence of risk. And we made all these very different seeming situations very much the same and, and very much in the same kind of framework. Uh, and in the process, we were able to find a general principle that makes us better at thinking. And so, you'll, so you're going to keep doing this type of thinking to learn things about the way society works, to uh, continue to collect facts and frameworks for understanding human social systems. But you can follow the exact same process to get tools for yourself to approach problems in a more intelligent, more thoughtful, more reflective, uh, more insightful uh, manner. 
So this is a framework we're going to follow. We threw, uh, we threw away all this detail uh, to model thinking and to help you be a better reasoner. You're doing the exact same thing. You've already been doing the exact same thing uh, to help you understand human social systems, is to make simple models. Uh, that's all I have for you. Um, and you can find me uh, here at UC Davis. My contact information is here if you're interested in anything I'm doing. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and I hope you had a great time.